This is Rick Matson from the University of Washington Shoulder and Elbow Service. Let's talk a little bit about uh, total shoulder replacement. Total shoulder replacement is the standard operative procedure used for shoulder arthritis that is not responded to non-operative management, provided that the rotator cuff of the shoulder is working well. The total shoulder replacement consists of two parts. One is the humeral component, which goes inside the arm bone and replaces the joint surface of the humeral ball, as shown here. The socket is resurfaced using a high-density polyethylene component that is press-fit and cemented into the bone of the shoulder blade. These two components come together in the artificial joint replacement, as shown here. Total shoulder joint replacement is a time-tested procedure for severe arthritis in shoulders that have an intact rotator cuff and good deltoid function. It usually leads to a significant improvement in shoulder comfort and function. Like all joint replacements, it carries the risk of persistent pain, infection, loosening, and weakness. But at surgery, the patient is positioned in what we refer to as the relaxed beach chair position. We approach the shoulder through a what's called the deltopectoral interval, which is the interval between the deltoid muscle, which is in this location, and the pectoralis major, which is here. Once we get inside the shoulder, we, rele we release the adhesions that are shown here that help mobilize the shoulder. We're careful to stay on the safe side of this muscle that we call the, or this bone that we call the lighthouse of the shoulder. So we call this the suicide because that's dangerous over there. And here's the safe side. So we always stay on the safe side of the lighthouse. We uh, need to open the shoulder and to get inside, we have to incise the insertion of the subscapularis muscle, which is this to the humeral bone at the lesser tuberosity. This muscle is almost always tightly contracted, so we do a 360 degree release to try to get its flexibility back. Then it's time to remove the arthritic part of the uh, arm bone or the humerus. We start our um, process by making a little hole in the arthritic head here and then putting reamers down the central aspect of the humeral canal and using that axis, which we call the orthopedic axis, as the guide for resecting the arthritic joint surface. This resection is at an angle of 45 degrees with the long axis of the shaft. We like to use a small stem inside the bone because then we can avoid the problems of weakening the bone with large implants uh, or even causing a fracture with an implant that is too large for the patient's bone. So we're very careful to minimize the amount of bone that we remove in performing this joint replacement. We then turn our attention to the socket, and this is the problem that we want to avoid. Here we can see that the ball is sitting too far to the back in a shoulder that has posterior erosion of the socket forming a double concavity or a biconcavity of the socket. So we need to address that and restore a single cup or concavity uh, for the uh, shoulder. So we do that by establishing a central hole, removing the cartilage that may be remaining at the front of the joint, and then using a specially uh, constructed reamer to ream the glenoid socket to a single concavity and then place our artificial joint surface made out of high-density polyethylene. And here you can see that this is fixed by some pegs that have a little bit of cement around them, as well as this central peg that has flanges into which the bone can grow and help fix the uh, prosthesis in position. We use a carbon dioxide spray. We call it the CarboJet and use it to dry the holes before cement is placed in these peripheral holes. This enables us to use a very small amount of cement because the carpentry is very precise here, and then 
the stage is set for final insertion of the artificial socket. We then have the opportunity to adjust the size and position of the humeral head to make sure we have the desired range of motion and stability. So we have guidelines here that we like to shoot for. Here's 40 degrees of external rotation with a subscapular S brought across the front of the shoulder. We like to make sure that the ball is lined up with the socket and that there is no more than 50% posterior translation of the ball with respect to the socket. And finally, we like to see that the arm internally rotates 60 degrees with the arm out to the side. If there is too much posterior translation of the ball, we use what we call an eccentric head. And so here's a standard head where the uh, joint surface of the ball is centered on the peg. But here we have an eccentric head where there is more of the joint surface to the front than to the back. And that helps us take a shoulder that has too much posterior translation as shown here and get the ball centered exactly in the socket as shown here. When it comes time to insert the humeral component, we place sutures six in number through the anterior part of the cut uh, that we made to remove the humeral head. We put vancomycin antibiotic down inside the canal to reduce any risk of infection. And then we implant the prosthesis at exactly the right location so it's lined up with what we call the berm of the humerus to make sure it's neither too high nor too low. <clears throat> if there's biceps tendon inflammation or irritation, we do a biceps tenodesis. That means we cut off the biceps right where it attaches to the socket, run it through the humerus, bring it out to the side, and then when we put the implant in position, it nicely fixes that tendon so that there's not a worry about the biceps tenodesis coming loose. Uh, we uh, can increase the quality of the fit of the humeral stem in the bone by using what we call impaction autografting. That means we take bone from the humeral head that we have re removed from the body and use that as bone graft by putting it down inside the humeral stem, and that gives us some additional fixation. Then we finally place the stem down inside the humeral bone, taking very good care to uh, keep from touching the uh, implant against the edges of the skin so to make sure it is as sterile as possible. So here is driving the impaction grafting into position, and here you can see how that enables us to get really good fixation without having to use too big of a humeral stem so that we haven't abnormally stiffened the bone so that it is normally loaded and so that the bone doesn't uh, disappear through a process called stress shielding. It's really important to check around the periphery of the ball to make sure that there is no extra bone. We call this area Pooh Corner, just as a way of remembering that uh, that's where we need to look. And here's the bone resected from Pooh Corner. We also like to make sure that when the arm is rotated, it doesn't lever open. We call that open booking. So we ch check very carefully to make sure we don't have unwanted bone in the wrong spot. Near the end of the procedure, it's time to repair the subscapularis, which is the only tendon that we had to cut to get inside the shoulder. We do that by taking these sutures that we placed previously at the neck cut, passing them through the edge of the uh, tendon, and sewing them and tightening them securely as shown here. We do a final motion and stability check to make sure that we have our flexibility and mobility uh, and stability characteristics. If there is too much slop in the shoulder, we can do what's called a rotator interval plication, which means we tighten up this interval between the subscapularis and the supraspinatus, and that gives us just a little bit more security. So here's an example of a shoulder both before and after the uh, total shoulder replacement. Here you can see this is actually two years after surgery, and you can see that the bone has already started to grow into this peg, and it's nice and securely fixed, and the bone uh, around the humeral component has nicely healed as well. This is an axillary view showing the before and after. Thanks for your attention. Please visit us at the website
as indicated here.